Hello all, welcome back to The Creative. So this week I decided to uh, experiment with some alcohol inks and my alcohol lift ink pad on my little 5x7 gel press. So if you have spent any time on Instagram, you have probably seen the Bridget Coopson uh, 30 days of inktober well her take on it anyway it has been like basically breaking instagram the prints that she's been pulling with alcohol inks on her gel press have just they they're beautiful so i was totally inspired by that uh and i had never used alcohol inks on my gel press before i have a couple that i mostly use when i work with resin so i don't really do a lot with alcohol inks outside of that but the results of this were so freaking outstanding it just basically added a whole new dimension of color and texture that I can use on my gel plate. I'm so excited to show you guys this video. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just picking through my little stash of alcohol inks. Half of what I have, like I said, is uh, used with resin. So it's like browns. I do a lot of wood grain stuff, but uh, I do have some colors and I'm trying to stick with mostly blues and greens, kind of all complementary colors. I experimented a couple of different ways with the best way to get coverage of the alcohol ink. So this first uh, print that I'm going to do, I actually brayered out the alcohol ink all over the plate. I was thinking that maybe, uh, because I did a little bit of experimenting earlier in the week with the stencil technique that Bridget Coopson shows, which is what I'm doing here, this works better if you have a thinner layer of alcohol uh, ink on your plate. I have a detailed but not too detailed stencil and I'm just taking some of that alcohol ink and I'm putting it directly into the stencil. This did take a little bit of time, but honestly, when it works, the effect is just phenomenal. It looks almost like stained glass. Uh, and, and I didn't pull any of these prints on Yupo paper either. This was all straight up copy paper and Nina index weight bright white paper. So. As you can see, I can't really tell if the stencil worked or not. So I'm kind of just guessing. I added a little bit more color and I'm gonna pull the first print. I pulled the print just like you do regular with acrylic paint with a very thin layer of white paint. I did use my brayer to make sure that I got good coverage and then I pulled it and boom, here it is. Oh my gosh, it was a little sticky, but it, it's just fantastic. You can see just hints of that stencil poking through. I was like, yes, this is glorious. This is amazing. Now I want to try something completely different. You guys know I love the Tim Holtz alcohol lift ink pad. I, I just am like obsessed with making x-ray images and stuff like that. So I wanted to see if the lift ink pad would work on the gel press. I'm thinking yes, because much like on Yupa paper, the alcohol ink doesn't dry. It's not like instantaneous. Uh, it, it sits there for a little bit. It takes a little bit to it to dry. So I'm thinking, well, that should give me enough time to lift some of that ink. I didn't know if it was going to work or not. So I just tried it on camera and lo and behold, it did. So if, if you're going to try this at home, I would be a little bit more heavy handed with the alcohol ink. Uh, than what you might be if you're just going to do this through a stencil because I wanted I really wanted a good contrast you also have to let the alcohol ink dry on your plate and you can see here that I didn't really do that I got tired I cut out probably around 10 or 15 minutes between of just like drying time and it still wasn't like totally dry but the effect of this is just out freaking standing oh my gosh I love it and uh, don't worry I will do a real-time walkthrough of all of the prints that we pulled at the end of the video. I used a little bit too much white paint and I was still able to get a ghost print from, from this, which actually surprised me. Uh, I got ghost prints from almost everything that I pulled. Most of them I show you in, in the process, I think. If not, uh, check out the end of the video. So now I'm gonna try this again and I'm gonna try it with a bigger, more detailed stamp. Uh, again, I'm getting a little heavy handed with the alcohol ink because I want a really nice contrast and this time I'm experimenting with how I move the alcohol ink on the gel press. I have that little uh, squeezy blower thing. I don't know the technical term for that, but I use that to move it around. 
stamped that really well, uh, did drop it, actually. That's what that was. <laughs> it fell off my uh, acrylic block. So I was a little bummed out, but I was like, eh, you know what? I, let's just see what happens. I have another background stamp that I'm using just to experiment more with different stamps. I want to see which ones work and which ones don't. Much like when you do a regular alcohol lift ink technique on Yupo paper, some stamps work better than others depending on the level of detail in the stamp. Uh, it, this one, even though I dropped it, I still think it came out beautiful and you can really see the, the, uh, actually you really can only tell, I guess I should say, if you got a really good resist when you put that paint over it and you can kind of see that when I was doing that, you could see the image of the stamp. This was still really pretty, even though you couldn't see the big stamp in the middle. Uh, that's okay. But the ones on the end were just, I was like, yes, this is fantastic. So uh, I'm going to try it again this time. Uh, instead of using that uh, squeezy blower thing, I'm going to throw down a couple of alcohol ink colors and then I'm going to brayer it out. Uh, I wanted to see what, would, what effect I would get if the paint, excuse me, if the ink was just brayered out a little bit thinner. I am being heavy handed with my alcohol ink. I'm just heavy handed with everything. And this time I'm going to carefully lay it down. I'm going to leave it for about 30 seconds. Then I'm going to pick it up and stamp it off. This is also how I clean my stamps when I use alcohol lift ink. And I know that I got a good resist because of the impression left by the stamp. So now I'm doing the same thing. I can see that resist through the paint. I am putting, you know, I'm bringing out thinly like we always do. And then I'm going to pull it. This is probably one of my favorite prints. I like, I gasped. I like, there was, it's just beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at that. You can see the stamp. I'm comparing it to the one that I dropped. But it's just, oh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I got such a good impression with that. Naturally, I was like, well, I need a face. And if I need a face, I'm going to go to my Dina Wakely stamps. So I threw down a couple of more uh, alcohol ink colors. I am being mindful of the color choices because you can make mud if you're not careful with alcohol inks. Grabbed one of the Dina Wakely uh, face stamps off the top of my head. I cannot think of the name. Check the description box below for a list of the full supplies. Uh, did the same technique, left it, and now I'm brain over top. So this was a little disappointing. As you can see, I have an impression, but when I pull the print, I don't really get the impression of the face like how I was hoping for. This is a good example of making sure that we use the right stamp with the alcohol lifting technique. You can't see the face. What you can see is that freaking script, and that looks out freaking standing. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to do a whole one of these just of scripts. It's going to be amazing. So then I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can use my foam stamps. Initially, I thought that the alcohol lift ink pad would just basically, so the fluid would just soak up into the foam. But then I was like, hmm, Shannon, you don't clean your stuff. So there's probably a layer of acrylic paint on that that I bet it'll sit right on. And you know what? I was right. It, this worked too. And I thought, God, did, I actually got a better impression from the foam stamps used this way than I do when I have like used them, you know, the regular way with like acrylic paint on the gel press. Even the, the stamp off was just a really good impression. I was really impressed with that. So again, I have another thin layer that I'm putting down and you can see all of that resist through the paint. Uh, the thinner, the better for this. I do want to stress that because otherwise, I mean, you're still going to get good prints and your ghost prints will look good. But it's just freaking phenomenal. I'm sorry. I know I've been saying freaking a lot. But I'm so excited. This I have not been this excited since I did the gloss spray on the gel press. I feel like I might need a cigarette after this. It was just so incredible and satisfying. This last print uh, I wanted to pull. I wanted to see if the acrylic paint would act as kind of like a resist. So I just grabbed some, threw it down through my favorite Dina Weekly stencil, which is Fracture Chevrons, let that dry, and now I'm just throwing a whole bunch of alcohol ink on top. Uh, I did use the uh, squeegee blower thing to kind of move the paint around, though now I'm wondering what would happen if I had brayered this out. I may try that again. And this was phenomenal. I think out of everything that I tried in experiments today, this was my favorite because... It's really cool, but I'm like, oh, I mostly just use acrylics and how can I incorporate this into my regular gel plate printing practice? And this is how it'll work with the acrylics and create some really amazing resist things. I, I don't know. Maybe that's not the technical word. That's what I'm calling it. But it, it, I was I was really excited that this worked because now when I pull out my acrylic paints, I can also pull out my alcohol inks. And that is the effect we got. It was amazing. 
absolutely amazing. You can still see none of the penny. You probably could do this with white paint and save your fancier acrylics, but it worked. It was just beautiful. All of these prints just came out phenomenal. It was something different than what I normally do. The backgrounds have these great grungy distress features in them. And because they're alcohol inks on bright white paper, the color is just phenomenal. The camera doesn't do it justice, y'all. I'm, I'm serious. Stop what you're doing immediately and go try this because it is totally worth it. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And in case you're wondering, my gel presses are fine. Uh, I didn't have any negative consequences from using the alcohol inks on them. Everything came out perfect. And if that's something you're concerned about, just wipe it off with a baby wipe or some of the conditioning stuff that you can get. All right, guys, that's it. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Hey, here's some more videos that you might like, and please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so that you can see more of my content.